Thermodynamics is the study of heat transfer and its relationship to doing work. This is actually an incredibly important concept that lets us do all kinds of different things. Taking each different type of energy change into account, we can then apply those ideas to heat engines. Look around and you are probably within sight of some type of machine that is based on the concept of thermodynamics. These objects use heat transfer to do work. You will also see this referred to as a Karo cycle. The figure on the right shows a piston and how heat transfer is being used to do work. If we heat the gas in the cylinder of the piston, the temperature and pressure rise. The pressure exerts a force and does work by moving the cylinder. As it expands, the pressure and temperature decrease. Heat is transferred out of the system, further reducing the pressure, allowing the cylinder to return to its starting position, hence the cycle. There are different ways in which the energy of a system can change. These are referred to as thermal processes and depend on what specifically is changed within the system. When we talk about thermal processes, we are assuming a few things. Okay, first off, we are talking about an ideal gas. This is one where energy is not lost to the collisions and the temperature does not change because of the collisions. These processes are considered reversible. This simply means that if it goes one way, it can go the other. We also assume that there are no non-conservative forces in play. This includes something like viscosity. Iso means the same, and baric refers to pressure. What do we measure pressure with? We measure it with a barometer. So that particular root word talks about the pressure. When we put the prefix iso in front of it, it means the same. So an isobaric process is one in which the pressure is kept constant. In this situation, we want to know how much work can be done if we keep the pressure constant. We talked about our ideal gas law as being able to describe the state of a gas in terms of its energy. So if we know the pressure and we know the volume, we have an idea of what the energy is. So if we have the same pressure over a larger volume, we have more energy. The idea here is that we have a volume of gas at some pressure. We change the volume of the gas, but keep the pressure constant. So our new state has the same pressure, but a different volume. If we look at figure 15.9, we see a piston that has all sorts of data associated with it. Let's ignore most of those for now, but look at the amount of force being applied by the piston. We know that the force is equal to the pressure times the area of the piston. If we want to know how much work is done by the piston, we can go back to our original work equation, work equals force over distance. Our distance is found by measuring how much the piston moves from its original position. Since for a fluid, the force is the pressure times the area, we can substitute that into our work equation. Look closely and you will recognize that the distance the cylinder moves is itself its own cylinder with a height and area. So the piston has actually moved up some change in volume. This is so very handy because that gives us a way to find the work done by our piston. Now if you look at your graph, you will see that the volume changed some amount. If we take the pressure times the change in that volume, then we are actually finding the area underneath the curve of that graph. What is so wonderful about that is that this is true no matter what PV graph we use. If we can find the area underneath the curve, we can find the amount of work done. Remember, ISO means the same. When we put that prefix in front of the word coric, we refer to a volume that stays the same. So an isochoric process is one in which the volume is kept constant. So we have a cylinder in which we cannot change the volume. If we add heat into it, what happens? It gets hot, that's it. There is no work done because nothing changes position. If we look at this in terms of our graph, we can see that if we do not change the volume, we get a vertical curve. So if this volume does not change, the work done is zero. Another way to change the energy of a system is called isothermal. Iso again means the same, and thermal refers to temperature. So in this situation, the temperature of the system does not change. This is done by putting the system into an environment where the temperature is kept constant. A common way to do this is to put the system into what is called a heat bath. A heat bath is a fluid that is kept at a constant temperature to help keep the temperature of the system from changing. 
This means that we are adding heat to our system to keep that temperature constant. In this case, we start our gas at a certain pressure and volume A, and we change it to a different pressure and volume of state B. If we look back at our ideal gas law, we can see that the number of particles stay the same, and that is along with a constant and the constant temperature. So what we have left is the product of the pressure and the volume. We know from before that this is an inverse relationship. We know from before that this is an inverse relationship, so we get more of a curve for our change. This line itself is called an isotherm. Every point along that line is the same temperature. Remember the area under the curve is the amount of work done. Since this is a straight line, we can't just multiply pressure and change in volume. This actually involves calculus. For our purposes, we will not get into the integrals, but just show what we end up with. NKT times the natural log of the ratio of the final volume to the initial volume. Scary, I know. But the thing to keep in mind here is that if the final volume is larger than the initial volume, the work done is positive. If the final volume is smaller than the initial volume, then the work done is negative. So expanding gas does positive work, and contracting gas does negative work. The last thermal process we have to talk about is called adiabatic. Adiabatic energy changes do not have a change in heat to the system. The system is insulated in such a way that no heat comes in and no heat moves out. So the change in Q is zero. However, the temperature inside the system can still change. This can be accomplished by using very effective insulation or by performing the process so fast that it is not enough time for the heat to transfer. So let's look at our PV diagram again. The change in pressure and volume follows an isotherm. So as we lower the volume of the gas, the pressure increases. This pressure increase causes the temperature to rise. So to sum up these thermal processes, we can keep our system at a constant pressure. In this case, the work done is equal to the pressure times the change in volume. If we put that into our total energy change, we see that the heat of our system minus the work, which is the pressure times the volume, gives us our change in internal energy. Constant volume results in no work because nothing is moving. So our change in internal energy is equal to the heat of the system. At a constant temperature, there is no energy change, and so work is equal to our heat. Finally, with an adiabatic thermal energy change, the thermal energy is actually equal to zero, and so our change in internal energy is equal to the work done. So let's look at figure 1512. We want to calculate the total work done in this system. Let's start with a path along AB. The pressure stays the same, so the process is isobaric, and we know that the amount of work done is equal to the pressure times the change in volume. We are given the change in volume as well as the pressure, so we just find the product of those two terms to be 750 joules. BC follows an isochoric path since the volume does not change. This means that the work for this section is zero. CD is again an example of an isobaric process, so we again use the pressure times the change in volume. The pressure was lowered to 2.0 times 10 to the fifth newtons per meter squared, and the volume decreases the same amount that it did increase in the first part. Since it decreases, we need to show that this is a negative change in volume. The work done on this leg of our cycle is negative 100 joules. From D to A, we are again isochoric, so the work done is zero. To find the total work done, we simply add up all of the work done by each part of our cycle. When we add all of those individual works together, we get 650 joules of work done. Another way we could have solved this problem was to simply find the area underneath our graph. Area is the change in pressure times the change in volume. The change in pressure, we have to subtract the differences in our pressure since we did not start our pressure at zero. So we take 1.5 times 10 to the sixth minus 2.0 times 10 to the fifth. So we get 1.3 times 10 to the sixth newtons per meter squared. When we multiply this by our area, we again get 650 joules of work.